QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Statement of Cash Flows. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to be taking a look at the statement of cash flows. It is going to be one of the major three financial statement reports, those being balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss, and now the statement of cash flows. However, the statement of cash flows will be used far less when building the financial statements than the other two statements, the balance sheet and the income statement. You could think of it as basically being constructed, and it typically will be if you looked at the software, how the statement of cash flow was constructed. It will be constructed after and in part from the other two major financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. So when you re record transactions using forms such as bills, pay bill, invoices, and so forth, you can think of them as changing or adjusting the major financial statements of balance sheet and income statement. That's the first place you want to look to see what happens. Then you can see the statement of cash flows and think of it as being constructed from in part, the balance sheet and the income statement. It's going to be the last financial statement that will be constructed. So in that way, it's kind of a supporting statement like the other the other reports to the major financials, that being the balance sheet and income statement. Let's open up a statement of cash flows, go into the reports drop down, company and financial. We can go on down all the way down to the statement of cash flows in this format, or we can go to the reports drop down and we can go to the report center and find the statement of cash flows in here. I'm going to maximize the report center. We're in the statements tab. We're in the company and financial. It's going to be an order profit and loss reports and then the balance sheet reports. And then finally, statement of cash flows. So let's scroll on down. We got us. These are all the profit and loss or income statement type reports all the way down to here. And then we have balance sheet type reports that finally are starting here. And then we're going to go all through all those. And then we got the statement of cash flows report. We want the standard statement of cash flows report. So that's the one we want. Let's run it. I'm going to run that report. Then we'll change the dates up top. This is a timing report in a similar fashion as the income statement or P&L profit and loss. So it does have two dates, a beginning and an end, unlike the balance sheet, which is a point in time. 010121 to 123121. That's going to be our range. Let's open up the other two reports, balance sheet and income statement or profit and loss, because again, those two reports are basically used to construct the statement of cash flow. So we want to recap where we are with those two reports and then see why we need a statement of cash flows. So let's go to the reports drop down. We're going to go to the company and financial. We'll open up the profit and loss standard, changing the dates up top from 010121 to 123121. This being another timing report having a beginning and end date. Let's open a balance sheet up, reports drop down, company and financial. We're going to scroll on down to that balance sheet standard, standard balance sheet. Changing the date up top to simply 1231, 123121. This being a point in time report as to a flow report, as to a activity type of report. So the, we want to compare the main comparison between the statement of cash flows and the and is to the profit and loss statement, although we use the balance sheet to construct it a lot of the time. So if we look at the profit and loss statement, we have our activity in terms of income and expenses. When we think about cash flow, we have activity over time related to the flow of cash, cash coming in, cash going out. What's the difference? Well, the income statement is recording income when earned, not necessarily when cash is received and expenses, those things used in order to generate the income when incurred, not necessarily when cash is paid. And therefore, uh, that, that, the reason we do that is because it, it gives us a better idea of performance, what we actually did. Because if we just used cash flows, it would distort the income statement because all we would have to do is is uh, change our cash flow payments, meaning we can change when we pay for things, and our income statement would no longer be comparable from period to period. So to stop that, to allow ourselves to have something that's worth comparing, just on our performance basis, we use uh, an accrual basis method. And then, on, but then it's still important for us to know the cash flows because cash flow is important. Cash cash is like the lifeblood. It's in, it's involved in in every financial transition, every financial cycle. So we still want like the cash flow type of information. So instead of reworking our entire books in a cash basis too, 
we will then tack on a statement of cash flows and that'll give us kind of the best of both worlds. So when you're thinking, if I go to the home page here, note that, that when we record income on the income statement, the performance statement, we record it when it is incurred. That means if we use an invoice, then that's the point in time we typically will record the income because that's closer to the point in time we earned the income. So, and, and so we record it before we get money then, because we're going to get money at some point in the future. So our income accounts will include income typically that we haven't yet received cash for, but it could happen the other way around as well. We could have gotten money before we did the work. Something like if we got a deposit or something on a rental property or, or on a guitar, we'd get the money before we deliver the guitar on an accrual basis method. Even though we got the money, we would not include it in income at that point in time because we had not yet earned the money on the expense side of things we typically enter the expenses at the point in time we enter the bill so if using a bill we will enter an expense when the bill is entered because that's closer to the point in time usually that we consumed whatever it is that we're going to pay the bill for like the telephone bill or utilities bill so even though we haven't paid cash yet we're entering an expense at that point in time uh, but it could work the other way around here as well, too, because we could prepay for something. If we pre prepay for something like insurance, then we would put it on the books as an asset. And even though we paid cash, we would not record it as an expense at that point in time because we had not yet incurred the expense of consuming the insurance in order to generate revenue. The other example is if we bought property plants and equipment like a forklift. We don't expense it even if paid cash. We put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it. So that's kind, of, that's kind of our starting point on the P&L, and that works really well for comparison of performance on a performance basis. But again, we want the cash flow as well. Therefore, we tack on the statement of cash flows. So the statement of cash flow is basically going to have two, three components to it, three parts to it. There's going to be the operating activities, the investing activities, and the financing activities. So you can kind of break this down with our, with our triangles here. Those are going to be the three components. End result on the statement of cash flow should be the ending balance on the balance sheet. So like other kind of supplemental reports, it ties out to another report. It kind of supplements the balance sheet report of the, um, the checking account here. So 108.504.88 should tie out to the bottom line of the statement of cash flows. Actually, we also have to add the undeposited funds because that's going to be a form of cash. So it would be the uh, 108.504.88. 8 plus the 1500 and undeposited funds for the 1100488 tying out to the statement of cash flows the 1100488 and then we're going to break out basically the activity so you can kind of think of the in, like the what we saw the equity section breaking out the activity for what we did that's in that's included in the equity you can kind of think of the of that in a similar fashion as the checking account up top. We're breaking out the activity that tells the story of how we got to this point in time in terms of our cash balance. So if we go to the statement of cash flows, then uh, the, per, the first part. Now, you might think that the statement of cash flows then should be simply the income statement on a cash basis because the, the income statement is, you know, an activity statement. And if we just convert it to a cash basis then you would think that that would be it, right? That would be our, that would be our, basically our cash flows. And it kind of is, except that uh, there's some things that might not be grouped on the income statement, uh, and, and, but we still do that component. And that will be basically the operating activities. So the operating activities you can think of as basically kind of like the income statement. It's the income statement that we have converted basically to a cash basis instead of an accrual basis so that we record income, for example, not when we record the invoice, but when we, re when we receive the cash and on the expense side when we pay the cash. Now, there, we could do this on a direct method, which means we would just take the income statement and we would rework it, meaning I would just change every line item here from an accrual basis to a cash basis, and then I'd have a, basically a cash basis income statement. That would be the direct method, and I would just record that as the first part of the uh, statement of cash flows. However, most of the time we use an indirect method, and the indirect method, although less intuitive to, to see, has the added bonus of having a kind of a reconciliation. We get to reconcile between what's on the income statement on a cash basis to what's on what would be on there for an accrual basis. And that reconciliation process means that a lot of financial requirements actually require it. So that's going to be 
uh, the method we use. So in other words, we're going to think about it this way. Look at the profit and loss on an accrual method. We already got to net income. There it is, 6,132.43. If I go to the statement of cash flows, I'm not going to redo it from top to bottom. I'm going to start at that 6,132.43. And then what we will do is we'll back out all the things that are non-cash uh, type of transactions. Now, the thing that's funny about this, the thing that is a little bit confusing, is that note that the operating activities we just said is basically reworking the income statement to get to, to a, a net income kind of like on a cash basis, which would be the, the net cash provided by operating activities. But we actually get there by taking the difference in balance sheet accounts, meaning uh, some of the balance sheet accounts are, are there because they are accrual accounts. So if we look at the change in the balance sheet accounts, like current assets and current liabilities, then that, that will allow us to basically back into the difference, what, the difference on the income statement of what is a cash basis and accrual basis type of transaction. So we'll actually use balance sheet accounts in order to back into what would be kind of like the, the net income on a cash basis, or in other words, net cash provided by operating activities. I won't go into this in a lot of detail, but if you're, if you're interested in understanding the cash flow basis and the double entry accounting system, if you understand this, it, it um, can help you to understand that process a lot better. So I would highly recommend if you're learning uh, double entry accounting and whatnot, look into the statement of cash flows and try to put one together because you'll learn a lot about the statement of just the double entry accounting system. We do have a course on that so you can look into it. So I'm not going to get into a, a whole lot of detail in, a, in the QuickBooks course, but that's the bottom line. So then we have the net cash provided by, oper by operating activities, but we also want another section for investing activities. So these are going to be types of things that are, are related to investing, types of things that wouldn't typically be on the operating activities. And one of the major components is the purchase and sale of property, plant, and equipment. The confusing thing about investing activities is you probably think of just types of investments like investing into um, stocks and bonds and stuff like we, what we would do with short-term investments but also anything that we put actually on the balance sheet from one perspective we can think about as an investment because the only reason we have assets from a business perspective in the business is in order to generate revenue so if we buy long-term assets such as property plant and equipment then those are going to affect more than just the current period and therefore aren't expenses and therefore aren't included in like the income statement or part of the operating activities, but will rather be helping us to generate revenue in the future. And therefore they're an investment in that sense to help us to, to generate the revenue in the future. So investments, when you think of investments, you got to kind of expand your, what you're thinking about with investments to uh, include like large purchases of property, plants and equipment under the under the terms of the statement of cash flow definitions so that's that means we have these cash flows for for the investments type of activities now note they put the depreciation down here and that's just kind of part of the the way the system is set up we can actually move depreciation up into the operating activity which is kind of where it would normally be but it doesn't affect kind of like the bottom line these two these two are kind of mis miscategorized uh, and I could move them up. Maybe we'll take a look at that in a second. But then the purchase of the property, plants, and equipment, if we paid cash for it, would be a, a decrease in, in cash here. And for the furniture and, and equipment, the decrease in cash. And then we're going to have financing activities. And again, these are kind of cash flow activities that we wouldn't typically have kind of on the income statement. And those are going to include things like, like loan type of activity might be down here in the financing activities as, as well as owner investments, the owner putting money into the company and owner draws, the owner taking money out of the company. They affect the cash flow, but wouldn't be on the income statement typically, and therefore not in operating activities either. Now note that QuickBooks does a pretty good job of constructing the statement of cash flows, but when you have some more complex transactions, you, you still may be needing to make some adjustments to the statement of cash flows. For example, you have the depreciation items down here, we, which we might need to recategorize. And if you have purchases and sales of equipment, especially purchases of equipment where you're going to be financing part of it, then you and sales of equipment where you have gains and losses and whatnot, you still might need to uh, make some adjustments to the statement of cash flows. For example, if we wanted to move these two up, these two accounts represent basically a change in uh, the accumulated depreciation, which is like depreciation expense. Uh, and, and that's usually going to be in the operating activities up top. 
So if you wanted to reclassify something in the statement of cash flows, then you could go to the edit group dropdown, preferences, and then we're going to go to the reports and graphs. We're going to go to the company preferences, and then in this statement of cash flows area, we can classify the statement of cash flows. So we had we had this item, the equipment. Uh, here it's in the investing. Now the difference between the equipment should basically be uh, the the depreciation expense. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move that to operating because that's typically in the operating. And then I'm gonna say that uh, we had uh, the equipment, furniture, and fixtures the same thing for the depreciation. I'm gonna put that into the operating. We also had something with the loans because they were in other current assets. They put it into the operating and those should typically be in financing so the loans payable i'm going to put those not in financing uh yeah financing they should be in financing typically so i'm going to move these over here and so let's do that i'm going to say okay and then okay and so we still have the same bottom line 110.0488 which should tie out to the balance sheet the balance sheet at the, remember we have to add the undeposited funds, so it's at the 108 to 504.88 plus the undeposited funds of the 1500 for the 110.004.88. So we still have the same bottom line number, but we moved the depreciation items, accumulated depreciations up into the operating income because really these are basically kind of like the depreciation expenses the other side of this transaction and it would often be recorded as basically a depreciation expense because that would be something on the income statement which was a non-cash type of transaction and therefore it needs to be pulled out of basically the net income type of number and then the loans would typically be a financing type of activity so we have the financing activity down here and that's one way you can you can use the formatting within quickbooks to kind of move some of the transactions around to be properly placed although again still if you have complex transactions you may need to do more adjusting that can just automatically be done within uh, the quickbooks system now note that these two items should tie out to basically the depreciation so we have the accumulated depreciation of the uh, 138.83 plus the 233.5 and let's take a look at the income statement or profit and loss and see if that is the case so so we're at the yeah, the 2472.33 this depreciation then does not represent cash that decreased net income so this net income is going down by non-cash items so they need to basically go back up and that's why on the statement of cash flows that this oftentimes will be reported as income instead of a change to the to the accumulated depreciation it'll it'll often be reported as depreciation as opposed to a change in the accumulated depreciation but it should still represent a change in the accumulated depreciation unless there was a sale that took place for the property plants and equipment that could uh, complicate uh, complicate matters but in any case that's going to be an, an overview of the statement of cash flows and you can get an idea of course of the cash flows adding in kind of a cash basis component to our accrual basis financial statements profit and loss and the balance sheet or income statement and the balance sheet again if you want more information on how to format a statement of cash flows i, I highly recommend looking into that if you're curious about the double entry accounting system itself debits and credits and just you know how uh, you know how the the system's going to work because you have to kind of back into things to to really if you were to build the statement of cash flows by scratch and by doing so you get a much better understanding of how the statement of cash flow works we do have a course on that check it out